All right, today we're out of the water in Northwest Ontario chasing big walleyes and shallow water swim baits and might even pick off a couple with live scope. Come on. Yes. Oh, that was so cool. All right, guys. Well, this might not be the most exciting topic that I've had on this channel, but it's something that I get lots of questions about. I am, I'm a gear nut and I'm always thinking about how can I maximize, you know, my storage in the boat? How can I know where everything is? Waste as little time as possible. Efficiency. I always talk about efficiency. I'm making YouTube videos. I'm trying to crank them out quick. I'm trying to stay organized, but I, I will say I'm not always the most organized person, but I feel like I am pretty organized in the boat. So that kind of leads in to today's sponsor, Heavy Hauler Gear, right here. We got the fishing gear bag. There's two sizes here. I'm gonna talk about this because it has allowed me to bring more gear in my boat. And what fisherman doesn't need more gear in the boat? So uh, I've done a full walk through the Alumacraft, so you've seen that before, but I'm just gonna show you kind of how I do some of the storage. First things, which Sam makes fun of me for this because it's very dorky. Having a label maker, I don't bring this in the boat all the time. I brought this along for this video. I put on all my tackle trays. Sometimes it's tough to look at a tackle tray quickly and know what you're dealing with. Otherwise, you might be going through 15 boxes you're not sure. So starting off with the side compartment, this compartment is kind of like my daily box. You can see it's kind of messy. It's got my flip-flops. It's got some food. Uh, it's got miscellaneous. This is the miscellaneous compartment. This one's close to me. I'm opening and closing it lots, but as far as fishing tackle goes, I like to keep it in my boat as much as possible. I don't like to be taking trays in and out because I end up forgetting stuff. So I try to bring everything along. So, you know, a pike trip, walleye trip, whatever. I, I have that stuff along. Now let's get on to the gear bag because this is something that has kind of changed how I organize things in the boat. This space under the seat is typically wasted space because when you're sitting here, you don't put your legs underneath. You're sitting here, sitting on the side, have your legs up. This is wasted space underneath. So my buddy Jason there designed this bag. There's two sizes and they can kind of fit everything. And I'll take the seat off just to show you. So the seat comes off and it sits around the seat pedestal. So this thing, depending on how you're setting it up, you know, if I was by myself, I'd probably put in this middle pedestal or right on the front on the butt seat. But there's two sizes. This is a smaller one, so I can turn it here. This can fit four of the smaller size tackle boxes. And then on the bigger, bigger one on the bottom, you can fit three of your normal size. I don't know what numbers those are, but those are your generic tackle boxes. So it's very easy access. If I was a fishing guide, this, I, I wish I had this when I guided because then it wouldn't have me digging underneath in different compartments. Now that label maker comes in. So on the back of every box here, I've got my label. So very quickly I can look at this and be like, okay, I need walleye jigs or I need jigging baits. And that's just the one box I pull out rather than rifling through all of them. Oh, I'm real hungry. I'm gonna pull out my snackle box with all my beef jerky, you know? So you gotta be prepared. Cool thing is, is I'm always switching from boat to boat. So I like this because if I'm switching from the kayak or I'm going on a fly-in trip or I'm in the boat, at the end of the day, this just lifts off. It's got a handle, you can put a strap on it too. It can go straight into the kayak, straight to the fly out. So then it's got the Velcro on the side, jigs, line. This bigger one, they actually both have it, but they have holes here. So you can take your leader material and you can pass it actually through the case of so this one on the side. I keep all my leader material. Let's say I'm using 12 pound fluoro today, which is what I'm using. I can just keep it at the side of the case and then it's handy. That will go back on. Could be all your tackle fitting under one chair. I, I do have too much tackle. So this, once again, labels on the back so I can just look at it quick. Here's a little hack for you guys with the Alumacraft rod lockers. I'm not taking advantage of it right now, but this piece right here, I'll push all these rods forward. This piece comes out and you can almost double the amount of rods that you can fit in your boat. Cause right now, you know, each rod fits nicely in there. If I'm ever doing a trip where I need to put a lot of rods in the Alumacraft, I'll pull that out and you can see the reels kind of sit on each other then, but you can fit probably 20 rods in there. So that's another little hack that I like for bigger road trips for gear storage. The Alumacraft has a live well in the front. The front live well, I taped up the outlets. I siliconed all the outlets so there's no water going in and out. And once again, tackle trays, tackle trays, tackle trays. I really like, I don't know what these trays are called, but these are what I use for my soft plastics. What are these big planos? They fit, you know, kind of plastics once again. So yeah, live oil gets filled. This one again, this is the other dry storage. Labels, I can look at it, I can look at it quick. I can see exactly what I'm dealing with. They fit nicely in there. And here's something else. This is a little Aaron Weeb trick. This latch right here, keep it turned, not all of them turn this way, but keep it turned upside down. Then when people grab it, they're not struggling. I, there's just often where, you know, you have it like this, people are pulling and then they turn all the way around and they pull or they, you know, it gets stuck. So if you keep it upside down, you just pull, you don't have to worry about spinning it. Obviously if there was, you know, a big wind at the back, it could lift your lid open, but I don't know. It's just one tiny thing that I've noticed that, you know, just 
one less thing to worry about. The mesh you can use for obviously tackle. I use it for life jackets. They dry out quickly there. They're really easy to get at. All right, then the front of the boat. This is the, the couple big latch compartments. This orange box has all my safety equipment. I've got my boat safety kit. I like these tiny little paddles just because they don't take up much space. I've yet to need to use it yet. This is another cool product from Heavy Hauler, another dry bag. This is where I keep two sets of rain gear. I always have an extra set of rain gear just because you never know. Seems like a buddy always, always forgetting some rain gear. So this is where I keep my rain gear and in the front. Two of the things I keep extras of, extra trolling motor prop, because that can also keep you hooped out on the lake, and extra bilge pump. Bilge pump, this could be for your live well if you're in a tournament. I've had, you know, bilge pumps die during tournaments. So an extra one of those just in case. And, and then I got some shore lunch stuff, which I'm gonna talk about in the next compartment. And then the catch and cook. The catch and cook compartment, which you think would be full of catch and cook and cooking supplies. Well, it's empty right now. This is where all my catch and cook stuff would go. I, I normally have a little fryer in there, some oil, and it's a nice big compartment for holding all your shore lunch stuff. Right here, a couple bumpers. Not much to it. That one is not a lockable compartment, so I, I wouldn't put valuables in there. And then going further back, this is the cooler. Once again, I normally bring a cooler for the day, so more tackle, more tackle, live well. Pretty much it's all tackle in the boat, so yeah, I don't know. I just get questions about how I organize my gear, so I, I've tried to keep as much in the boat as possible this year, so I'm not moving it back and forth, but that's kind of it. Should we go fishing? I guess we should go fishing. Kind of look like, well, maybe those aren't fish. We'll probably just catch a bass off this point. Well, all the talking to the camera's done. Actually, no, this will be talking to the camera. All the talking about gear storage is kind, kind of done. Depends if we need to do some digging in the boat, switching lures. First cast, and we're on, I think it's a smallmouth. Nope, it's a tiny pike. Today's gonna be a good day. The hammer handles are biting. Yes. A lot of my friends from America drive up to Canada to catch pike like this. Just kidding. All right, so we are throwing one of my favorite shallow walleye baits. This is the banger rib swim bait on a homemade Jay's jig jig head. This, I think this is a quarter ounce. I use quarter ounce or three eighth. I don't want something that's gonna fall that slowly. I'm fishing fast, this is like a power technique. I'm expecting the walleyes are still kind of gonna be shallow in these muddy sandy bays, but we'll see, we'll be bouncing around. I'll show you how I use live scope. We got the live scope recorder hooked up and we're gonna be trying to put a big walleye in the boat. Don't really care about eaters today. I'd like one in that 25 to 30 inch range. First cast though. We were definitely gonna catch some bass as well. We're gonna be, there's a nice juicy boulder. We're gonna cast at it. I hear it's a bad, uh, a bad omen to catch a fish on the first cast though. We'll see if that's true. So what I'm doing with my live scope is obviously it's, it's mounted on my trolling motor. So it looks where my trolling motor is looking. That's where I'm getting that live scope. But what I'm doing is I'll motor along. I got it on the six or seven right now. It'll give me some forward momentum. And then in between those bursts, I'll take the motor and I'll scan in and I'll scan out. I just seen a fish there. So there's a fish. So I'm just, I am moving along, but I'm also using this as a scanning tool. I think it's, you're missing out if you're just looking at wherever you're driving. Looks like there's a fish 10 feet back. We'll see if I can get my jig dropping near him. So yeah, there are devices out there. You can use the pole, obviously. The reason I don't like using a pole, is it's one more thing to put in and out of the water every time you stop. Um, I know there are situations where, you know, I probably wish I had a pole. I do have a pole setup, but the trolling motor's fast. I drop it in. When I pull the trolling motor up, it comes up with me. Range wise, I'm going, 50 to 100 feet, depending on how deep I am. Sometimes I'll go a little further, I might go to 150 feet away. Right now I'm scanning at 60, there's a fish. I'll bump the gain up a bit. We'll see where that fish is. So there's a couple fish just barely flickering. And I think too, it's very easy to get stuck into like, hey, I wanna see the fish eat on live scope. And that is, some people say it ruins the fishing aspect. You don't need to see the fish eat your bait. Like if I know there's fish in general area, another pike. Looks like we're filming a pike video today. Got lucky on the last one, I guess. Yeah, just because you're not exactly tracking your bait in front of live scope. I mean, if you know your bait's in the general area and the fish is hungry, you probably still have a pretty decent chance of catching that fish, but I got to retie. We're going to switch colors, get a color that less pike will eat. Actually, no, I like that color so much. Here's another little tip. If you're like, hey, I wonder how to rig this hook and where the hook should come out. So you can lay the bait beside it and pinch it. So I can kind of line it up to pinch it right there. So the top of my finger, that's where that hook should come out. So when I pinch it and I go through, then I can kind of mark that spot. I, I have, you know, it was right at the bottom of that fourth rib. And then when you slide it on, it's gonna be straight, something like that. All right, we're gonna try something a little more main lake right now. The water is really warm in the base. It's even 76 in the main lake here. So they, they can pull out to those first points if they're not in the base. So we're learning. We're just looking, trusting the electronics. 
You can see those rocks right into the surface. Maybe a smallie. Ah, I don't think there's smallies right here. Could be walleyes up here though. I've seen them up in the rocks. Oh no! Oh, why is my drag so loose? That sucked. Right there. We'll see. See if I can get redemption on that fish. I didn't really sting them too hard. Oh, what do we got? What do we have right on top of the hump? Wasn't live scoping that one. I can visibly see the rocks. We didn't bring a net today. And we got another pike. And he took my jig again. Gosh darn pike. Oh, I love this boat. Oh, I didn't even see that rock in front of us. Wow, that was landed on a fish. That is not a walleye. But hey, I'm not complaining. This is a big old boulder in the back of the bay. So yeah, there's gonna be something sitting on here. That is kind of one of the things with spring walleye fishing. You're probably gonna run into smallmouth. We're gonna fish out to this point here. Gonna catch a couple big walleyes, celebrate some fist bumps. Maybe jump in the lake. Oh, yes, that's a nice walleye. The boys ready for some fist bumps? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that fish was suspended. I saw him on live scope, just hovering off the edge here. That is a dandy. Sure wish I had a net right now. Big golden Sunset Country walleye. Woo, just got the camera wet. There we go, that fish was cruising off the point. Let's see if we can get that jig out. Jig's out. Here we go, probably 22 incher we'll call it. We're off to a start, just had to break the ice. Enough for those pike, but as you can see, a bait like that, walleye has no problem choking. I thought that was a pike for sure. I think we're gonna catch a lot of fish on this point. I just got a feeling. Ooh, be a walleye. Nope, <laughs> as soon as it comes launching out. That no walleye. There you go. The old Canadian combo. Walleye and bass. Once the water gets warm enough, then those fish start to transition from some of those muddy bays and shorelines out to these points. And you can almost like follow the transition. Right now, I think this is like a big main lake point and we're kind of on the shoreline leading into that point. And I can, I can imagine that they're just kind of transitioning out, you know? Water gets a little warmer, they'll push even further, a little deeper, but right now they're still kind of just slowly inching their way out. This is a 3 8 ounce head, which is on the heavier side. I always say like get away with a lighter jig, but in this situation, I'm not finessing them. I'm just trying to fish fast and get in front of their face. And fishing fast in this scenario means I want to get that jig hitting the bottom. I want it to fall. I'm not looking for, I mean, the fish might eat it on the fall, but as you can see by that one walleye that ate it out in the open water, they're, they're hunting. These fish are coming off the spawn. They're hungry. So when I'm throwing the swim baits, I like, I like a longer rod and this is the signature series that I've been working on. And I wanted, I wanted a longer rod and seven and a half is like kind of where it tops out for a lot of spinning rods. So this is a 710 and this thing can bomb the rod. It's definitely a little bit of a slower action, meaning it bends more throughout the entire rod. And I kind of like that for keeping fish pinned because a lot of the time I'm fishing with braided line, which, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have give. So the give has to be somewhere. And if it's not in the line, it's not in the rod. Well, then it might rip out of the fish, right? So. Wish we had more time in the day. Felt fishy. Oh, come on, baby. That feels like a good walleye. Nice. Just a little further off the point. There we go. Swim baits, like six feet, seven feet of water, and you got that warm wind blowing on there. I think this point might be our, might be our best ball yet. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a nice fish. You can just tell like the, the bass are like against shore and the walleye's like half a cast distance back. I was doing this the other day when I, I was catching more bass and walleyes. Now I'm like two cast distance away from shore and it seems to be where there's a walleye or two milling about. So even though I caught some fish on this point here, 
the shoreline adjacent to it, I think so often you get caught up with, you know, th this could be any species with m musky pike. I, I learned this from my buddy Darcy Cox, some musky guide on Lake of the Woods. And he was just saying, oh, so many people will rip right to the point and they will take a couple casts at the sweet spot and they'll be gone. And he's like, so often those fish will be a little bit further down. They might be 50, 100 yards down. And that kind of carries over for all species. I mean, yeah, when you're fishing in a tournament or whatever, limited time and you got to hit the best of the best, well, often that tip of the point is going to be the best of the best spot. But even today, we didn't catch any on the tip. We caught one on one side and one on the other side. That's a small mouth, pretty nice one. Almost pulled the rod right out of my hands. Would you look at the size of it? Like I said, you slide a little shallower and you end up getting more bass. Um, as much tackle as I have, like these two boxes are the ones that are getting used today and they get used a lot of time in the spring. When it comes to picking a swim bait, this isn't well organized, I haven't made baits lately, but there's a couple things that will affect what bait I'm gonna choose. If I want something that's gonna swim through the water fast, I'm gonna pick something a little more narrow, like this, right? The Slick Shiner, this is the, the banger ribs. This is a store-bought bait by Headbanger. This is a homemade do it molds. So a little more narrow profile. I don't know if I have those other ones here, but even, even one like this, for example, it just has a thicker body. Um, it's gonna have more resistance. It's gonna fall a little bit slower. I mean, if I wanted to fish even faster, I'd go to a smaller bait because there's just less resistance on it. So, but today kind of going a little on the bigger side, middle of the road though, but bigger banger ribs. And then yeah, the three eighth, I'm using 12 pound fluoro. I feel like 12 is a pretty good number for fishing shallow around rocks. You can set the hook hard. And then 10 pound braid. 10 pound braid I use on, you know, a lot of my spinning setups for smallies, walleyes. Pretty tough to break 10 pound braid. Oh, that's a fish cast. Oh. Oh, if this is a walleye, it's a good one. If it's a walleye, it's a good one. I think it might be a walleye. Don't be a pike, be a big walleye. Nice. Such a good average size. Here we go. Give this one a look to the camera. Perky dorsal. Sweet. We've been picking them off one by one with the swim bait. That's good. That fish hit hard. That one is really close to shore. That's two walleyes and like two casts there. So we might be onto something. There's another fish on live scope 25 feet in front of us. This might work out. He's chasing, he's chasing. Oh. Man, I think that was a hungry walleye cruising around. 30 feet. Oh, he might be coming for my bait. I just saw him darting. Oh, he's chasing, he's chasing. Oh, come on. Oh, it's gonna drop right on him. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Oh, ho, 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 that was so cool. Not a chance I would've caught that fish with a live scope. Oh my gosh, and it does not feel small. Oh man, if this is a big walleye, well, let's just hope it is. Biggest walleye of the day, look at that. Woo! Man, we played with that fish again and again and again on live scope. She's barely hooked. Oh, baby. Look at that big walleye. That was suspended like 20 feet down. Ridiculous. There we go. Just watching the electronics, like I said, swooping around and we saw that big one. Man, didn't know, thought maybe it was a pike, but I'm like, I'm gonna keep casting there. Look at that. Oh man, my heart was pumping when I saw that fish come up that last time like I think she's gonna bite wild that's two fish we've seen now they've been suspended off the points they can do some weird stuff in the spring so man that was cool that was one of the cooler walleye eats I've had I think oh there's a fish that looks like a pretty big one too 45 feet off the nose oh he's coming fast towards us this one baits a little too far behind him though see if I can catch up it's gonna drop right on his head Look at this. Oh man. He's coming. Coming, he was. Yep. Oh. Baby. Fish are chowing. 
This one is, I think, just as big as the last one. Oh, man. No bait needed. Look at that dark old walleye. Walleye's got some stories to tell. The bang of ribs. This bait's kind of cool because the ribs on it kind of collapse, so it's just even less resistance when the fish bites, you can just chow down on it. Cool deal. Those Europeans, they designed some interesting baits. That was a, a very cool live scope interaction once again. I know I put that tackle box somewhere and I'm just rifling through the boat. Oh, I saw that walleye eat. Wow, that fish was in like two feet of water. That was cool. For sure thought that was a bass. It's a little big to boat sling. We can just jiggle that out, just barely hooked. Sweet, so dark, heavy. Get some thick fillets on that, mama. There's a suspended fish. Where is he? 25 feet. Oh, it's gonna be close. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Got her. Oh, my drag was so loose. I'm not sure if it's a walleye or a pike. It's not small. Oh man, what an interesting pattern. Well, it's a pike, so maybe it's not too much of a pattern. I thought that was the walleye of all walleyes, but I think this fish might end the day for us. She's gone. All right, guys, that's a wrap. You know, I'll catch walleyes any way I need to, but catching with swim bait is, is so much fun. Watching them just charge up on the electronics was outrageous. Um, huge shout out to Heavy Hauler for partnering on this video, for sponsoring this video. Uh, very cool product. I love their backpack, that waterproof backpack I showed, and then the gear bag, that bag that goes under the seat post pedestal. Amazing. Uh, that's all I got for today, guys. Wear your life jackets, get yourself some swim baits, go catch some walleyes.